Uh, so he goes on to say that uh, this uh, Bav- Bavinik, Bavinik observes uh, this quote. He says, The distance between God and us is the gulf between the infinite and the finite, between eternity and time, between being and becoming, between the all and the nothing. However, we little we know of God, even the faintest notion implies that he is a being who is infinitely exalted above every creature. He's different but he still relates to us. He later goes on to say that there is no knowledge of God as he is in himself. We are human and he is the Lord, our God. There is no name that fully expresses his being, no definition that captures him. He infinitely transcends our picture of him, our ideas of him, our language concerning him. He is not comparable to any creature. Wow. And so, you know, we, we see this at the, the, um, at, at the burning bush. Who, who can I say, uh, you know, uh, th- that uh, that that is talking to me. I am that I am. I, I am the the thing that is being. He's he's. There's nothing to to relate to him. And when God swears, who, who what does he swear by? There's nothing greater than him. There's nothing that he would stoop down to lower himself. He just says, "Say that I am that that yeah. I swear by myself, myself because yeah. he is the highest being and he is perfect in that swearing of it. Right. He's not going to falter in it. And so that's the confidence that that God is giving to, um, to his, his, um, his creatures, uh, based on his promise to do something. When, when he, when he makes a, an agreement with Abraham, he puts Abraham under a sleep and he makes the covenant with Abraham from himself. He, he stands on both sides and says, you will fail, but I'll stand on the right side and the left side. I will pass through what exactly you would do in agreement with landowners or, or whoever you're going to enter into. And I'll be on both sides that way. Even if you fail, I won't. Right. And so we see that yeah. again throughout scripture. Yeah. Yeah. And so Christensen uh, says that God's otherness, this unique holiness of divinity, his transcendently august and uh, vulnerable majesty, he says, can be oriented around two poles. First, there are God's incommunicable attributes, right? In other words, whatever is true of God that is not true of us as his creature speaks to his holiness. So those are attributes that we don't have, right? They're incommunicable. And then secondly, there are his communicable attributes, right? Whatever overlapping features exist between God and his image bearing creatures, right? Human beings. And, uh, you know, both of these are incomprehensibly greater than obviously God is incomprehensibly greater than we are. And this too then speaks of his holiness. So we have these various two aspects, these two poles that he talks about. Mm -hmm. There are attributes of God that we don't share their attributes of God that in a limited small sense, we kind of overlap with God. Right. We share. And, right? and that stems not just from human nature. It, c- it comes from the, the Imago Dei, the, the image of God uh, put into us by God, because again, that's something that we would want and expect to see in this transcendent being things that we can relate to so that we can, we can fellowship with him, that we can, uh, see him, we can perceive him, we can receive him. And there are also things that we wouldn't want to, to be able to understand him fully because, and what type of God is that to know? How is that different than, than Baal or Dagon or, you know, Molech or any of these other, you know, false gods that, that come about that are known and hewn and we're able to, to do it. Okay. Now picture God as the Trinity. Whoa, hold on, hold on a second. That 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 you know that flummox, uh, you know the the best of minds throughout history, and so we would want to see that. We expect to see that, but he's not completely separate, so we couldn't even know him. The image of God that is in us is able to have that relationship on the certain qualities that he shares with us. Mm-hmm. Pretty, neat. Mm-hmm. pretty. Neat. Yeah, yeah. So by contrast, we are contingent. We. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are relied upon with our parents. We are relied upon to travel through time and so far only one direction. <laughs> uh, sometimes it feels faster. Uh, you know, we have to be sustained by food, water, air, uh, shelter, all those things. We are finite and exist in a narrow frame of imminence. This alone constricts our thoughts about God. So, you know, can, can, can I, you know, uh, fully fathom what fully God and fully man is? Uh, no, I have a hard time with that, but I understand 
a difference between what he is, what he isn't. I can say, okay, it's not a mixture. It's not half God, half man. I can see the issues with that. So there are uh, things within the revelation of God that I can understand and know. And even if those are negative things that we can say, God is not like this, it helps to inform what our things, uh, what what our, our known things are. And we see that too within certain, uh, like the Chicago statement, there's the here's what scripture is and here's what it isn't. We, we also make these distinctions when we write um, these, these kind of meetings together that, that we have. This means that we are lowly creatures, are wholly dependent on the one creator for the continuous sustaining of every moment of every fiber of body, mind, and soul. In him we live and move and have our being. And this is drastically different than than what, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the deist, the blind watchmaker, winds up the universe, sets it up, and walks away. God is actively participating because because all of creation is dependent on him. He uh, sustains and, and creates and allows things to continue on. It's how he thinks. It's how he acts. Uh, it's, it's, it's how he wants us to, um, to relate to one another, wants us to relate to him. This isn't, uh, you know, the, the, the God who is so far off. He's right here. He's with us, yeah. So we are contingent. We're lowly creatures. He says we do not get to define who or what we are. We do not belong to ourselves. Since God created us, we belong to him together with all else that he's created, right? So God is a creator. Everything belongs to him. He says we stand thoroughly accountable to his authority in all dimensions of our being. And then he quotes Isaiah here, for the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. Isaiah 33, 22. Uh, and then, of course, Matthew 28, Jesus says, all authority in heaven and on earth rest, you know, with the divine son of God. So, yeah, so we are, he is the authority. Uh, we don't get to determine who we are, what we are. Um, you know, we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to God. Right. right? He owns us, <laughs> uh, which again, in our culture, in our society, we don't like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm independent. I, I just require everyone else to do everything else so that I can exist. <laughs> so yeah, and all of this, God has come down to us. He is not absolutely transcendent. Uh, otherwise, he would be completely unknowable. Mm -hmm. He has graciously condescended to our plane of existence. He enters into it. He, he, um, he visits, he acts, he uh, um, uh, makes himself known uh, through his word and through uh, his presence. The epitome of the eminence of God is wrapped up in the mystery of the incarnation of Emmanuel, God with us, the Son of God, emptying himself by assuming a human nature. By, by the, um, the Westminster uh, Confessions calls this this his humiliation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. God humiliating himself and coming down and stooping so low as to be like one of his creatures, but he can't fully be one of his creatures or else he'd fail to be, be God. Be God. Yeah. <laughs> and submitting himself to the cruelest of human, hum humanely devised tortures, strangely enough, in order to rescue us, the same such cruel creatures. And right. that's uh, uh, Philippians uh, yeah. 2, 6 through 7. Jesus Christ represents the paradoxical wonder of the transcendent and imminent God. And again, that's, uh, again, that's one of the reasons why we have to understand it is fully God and fully man. And those two are distinct, uh, uh, uh beings within one, one human, human body. Right. So we have this, God is transcendent, right? He's other, he's infinite, he's eternal, but he's also imminent, right? He is with us. We might say, right? He he uh, he condescends to to uh, to our level in order to communicate with us. In fact, Jesus Christ, in order to die for us in a cruel way, right? That's what he's getting at here.